We got major Miami Dolphins injury news on today's episode of Dolphins Today by Chat Sports. I am Nick Roloff. Welcome in. We got updates on Bradley Chubb, Odell Beckham Jr., Isaiah Wynn, just 24 hours until the roster cutdown day for the Miami Dolphins. And make sure you are subscribed to the channel because we are going to have later today my final 53-man roster prediction for the Miami Dolphins. But we will also have you covered on every single cut and who actually made the 53-man roster tomorrow afternoon. So hit that sub button. Let's get to 58,500 subscribers before the deadline tomorrow afternoon. Come on, you don't want to miss anything surrounding the Miami Dolphins. All right, let's start with Isaiah Wynn because head coach Mike McDaniel spoke to the media this morning and shared a lot on some of these top guys that are banged up, saying that Isaiah Wynn is going to start on the pup list. And I do want to make this very clear to all the Dolphins fans at home right away here is that what does being on the pup list to start the season mean? Well, being on the pup list actually means you are missing the first four games guaranteed. You are not eligible to return for the Miami Dolphins until week five. Also, there's something to note here. Dolphins have a bye in week six, so if you're on the pup list for the first four games, you might be activated, but you could also be held out for that week five game against New England, so it might be really a situation where you are out the first six weeks because of that early bye week. But with the situation regarding Isaiah Wim, this does not surprise me whatsoever. He has not practiced with the Dolphins all offseason long, and as we continue to go throughout training camp, right, and these players remained on the pup list, it looked very, very obvious that these guys were not going to be able to go for the first game of the regular season, and it made sense to keep them on the pup list, give them more time to heal up, recover, return from injury, and then that would allow you to keep some other players on your roster in the initial 53-man roster because some guys deserve to be on this team. Now, interior offensive line might not be one of them, but it might allow you to keep an extra corner or a wide receiver in some positions of need. There's another injury alongside the offensive line. Aaron Brewer, the former Tennessee Titan who Miami signed to a three-year deal in 2024 NFL for ANC to replace Connor Williams. He has no timetable to return. Now, maybe that is the wrong way to phrase this with Aaron Brewer. McDaniel was just non-committal towards a timeline for Aaron Brewer. He said that he liked the way that Brewer was progressing in his injury. Remember, it's a hand injury. At least that's what we are anticipating due to him kind of holding his hand on the initial injury that he suffered a couple weeks ago. Um, but McDaniel did not say if he was going to be ready for week one against Jacksonville or not. Now, this one is concerning to me because the implications that Aaron Brewer has if he misses the first game are pretty monumental. Right now, if he was healthy, your starting offensive line would likely be Teron Armstead at left tackle. And we're going to go from left to right here. Robert Jones, Brewer, Eichenberg, Austin Jackson. But if Aaron Brewer misses week one, you're now looking at probably Armstead, Jones, Eichenberg, and then Lester Cotton at right guard with Austin Jackson at right tackle. So to me, getting Aaron Brewer back is paramount for this Dolphins team. I'm not going to act like he's the most important player on this team, but because of all the shuffling that you have to go through with Brewer being out, it's going to be kind of it's going to be iffy for this Dolphins offensive line. Like, I'm not even that sold on Liam Eikenberg being the starting right guard, but now you've got to start him at center and now have Lester Cotton at right guard if Brewer is not able to go. So I am really, really hoping that Aaron Brewer is going to be able to play week one against Jacksonville because I do not want to see an interior offensive line that features Robert Jones, Eichenberg, and Lester Cotton. I think that's setting us up for disaster, but who knows? Maybe Chris Greer claims someone that was cut from a different team or makes a trade before week one if he doesn't feel confident with Aaron Brewer or the rest of the crew on that interior offensive line. So write your confidence on the Dolphins' O-line. I feel very confident about the two bookend tackles, right? Teron Armstead and Austin Jackson, I think one of the best tackle duos in the NFL, if we're going to be honest. But the concern with this Dolphins' offensive line has always been on the interior, and it will remain on the interior. Scale your confidence on 1 to 10. All right, let's transition over to some defensive players here, and this is Bradley Chubb. He is going to start on the pup list, which means he is missing the first four games of the season. And I'll say this on Bradley Chubb. I think this was very expected, and I'm not shocked that Bradley Chubb is going to be on the pup list. 
Chubb, one of the best pass rushers in all football, is clearly going to miss the first four games due to that knee injury that he's recovering from at the end of last season. Chubb is one of the most dynamic pass rushers in all of football. There's no debating that. But it makes sense that he starts on the pup list when you have the depth that you have at this edge position. Jalen Phillips. Mo Kamara, Chop Robinson, Emmanuel Agba, and Quinton Bell are going to have to step up for the Miami Dolphins. I feel confident that they will be able to because it's a big, big four games for Miami to start off the season. Those four games, by the way, Jacksonville, Buffalo, Seattle, Tennessee, those four games are very, very important for the Dolphins. I think with bare minimum, if the Dolphins want to win the AFC East, and they want to make the playoffs, they want to have an 11-win season, which is kind of where I expect them to be. If they want to have the season that they have expected within and the expectations that I have placed on them, this has to be a 3-1 and one start regardless. You need to win against Tennessee. That's at home. I think you need to win in Jacksonville to start off the year at home. Now, if you split Buffalo and Seattle, I'd understand Buffalo's at home on Thursday night football. I think you should win that game. But as long as you split with Seattle and Buffalo, I'd be cool with that because traveling to Seattle cross country isn't always the easiest thing to do. Now, granted, now you are set up for a 4-0 start because you do travel to Seattle, but you open it at home and then you have Buffalo at home on Thursday night football, which gives you an extended time to prepare and rest for that West Coast trip to Seattle. So a 4-0 trip is necessary, but the reason why I wanted to highlight these four games is because those edge rushers that Miami has without Bradley Chubb are going to have to step up, getting after Trevor Lawrence, getting after Josh Allen, getting after Geno Smith. Tennessee might not be as big as a need to get after the quarterback as the other three, but with the other weapons those teams have in the quarterback play, you are going to need to get pressure on them to change the outlook of your defense. I don't care how good your secondary is, you need to get pressure so these four or five guys that are going to need to step up with Bradley Chubb out the first four games, probably the biggest part of this defense. We have more to talk about here with injury news. Odell Beckham Jr. injury update coming up in just a second. But we are sponsored by Game Time, and i got to give a massive shout-out to them. The preseason is finally over, which means it is time to look forward to the regular season, and you need to get your tickets for these regular season games with Game Time. It's the best ticketing app, and it's the only one that I use. And they're actually rolling out a new feature called Game Time Picks. It filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats, so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. They have all-in pricing. Toggling this feature allows you to see the total front of your ticket up front with no surprise fees at checkout. They also allow you to see your view from the seat. Panoramic views. Make sure you never get surprised when you walk into your venue and say, well, I didn't think this was going to be our seat. No, you'll know because of that picture that they're showing you inside the app. I use game time all the time when I go to events in Dallas, whether it be a concert, comedy show or a game myself so take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use code chat sports for twenty dollars off your first purchase terms apply but again create an account and redeem code chat sports c-h-a-t-s-p-o-r-t-s for twenty dollars off download game time today what time is it it's game time all right, let's move over to Odell Beckham Jr. now because the status on the veteran wide receiver is not very clear. And McDaniel was kind of hesitant on what to do with OBJ. He stated that it is not clear if he will start on the pup list or not. Exact quote from Mike McDaniel. There is not a scenario where he is going to jump out there with a cape on without practicing at all. So to me, when you combine the fact that McDaniel was unsure if he's starting on the pup list or not, and then this quote with OBJ not being able to just jump out there with no practice to play, it is very obvious to me he is not playing week one against Jacksonville. We have said that over the past two weeks or so as he's remained on this pup list and hasn't been practicing that Odell, as good as he is, as a veteran as he is, there's no chance he's playing week one due to the fact he has no chemistry and no rapport with QB2 a tug of Aloha. So when you think of the Dolphins' schedule and you go back to those first four games, well, if he's not going on the pup list, when could he return? Well, it's not going to be week one against Jacksonville. And – Think about this. If you're playing Buffalo in week two on Thursday night football, that's a pretty quick turnaround from week one to week two. So probably not going to play in that game. So to me, it's likely going to be week three against the Seattle Seahawks on the road where Odo Beckham Jr. makes his Dolphins debut. 
Why do I get that number? Well, it's because I just said I don't think he plays in the first game, and I don't think he's going to be able to play in the second game since it's a quick turnaround. And if he's not going on the pup list, which means you have to miss the four, first four games, well, then the only game that he could possibly return is probably in week three because if he's going to miss the first three weeks, then you might as well just put him on the pup list because do you really need him for week four against Tennessee Titans. I'm not so sure of that. Odo Beckham Jr., I think he's going to be a good player for this Dolphins team. I know a lot of people in the comments section are calling him Will Fuller 2.0. I don't think that's the case whatsoever. OBJ will play for the Dolphins this year, and he will be impactful as that third wide receiver. This might take some time for him to actually get on the football field. So predict it for me. When will OBJ make his Dolphins debut? It's likely going to be within the first five games of the year. So pick a week, pick a team. If I had to make my bold prediction, it's likely going to be week three against the Seattle Seahawks. But I want to see your thoughts down below. I will right, we'll round out the show with some positive news here, and it's Mike McDaniel being very complimentary of quarterback Skylar Thompson, and I think this is very indicative of why the Dolphins ultimately went with Skylar Thompson over Mike White for that QB2 role. Now, I don't think it was a hard decision considering how bad Mike White was in the training camp and preseason portion of this year, but Skylar Thompson had his up and down moments. McDaniel said that he's a different quarterback than he was at the start of training camp and start of last year. He also mentioned how his teammates have confidence in him whenever he takes the football field. I like what I heard from Coach McDaniel. I really, really do. And I think Skylar Thompson is going to be a fine backup. I'm not completely sold on his idea of being able to lead this team if Tua Tagovailoa goes down with an injury, but there's not many QB2s in the National Football League that you would feel confident in leading a team to a deep playoff run or a Super Bowl if your QB1 goes down. I still would be open to adding a third quarterback to this roster. I uh, don't want it to be Mike White returning. Um, but if there was a really good QB that somehow came available because he got cut or just not going to make it, I would trade a late round pick for a decent backup quarterback or take a developmental guy. For example, before we get out of here, Joe Milton, like if the Patriots end up getting rid of him and just keeping Brissett in May or Brissett, May, Bailey Zappi, like why not take the chance on Joe Milton if you can get him in this team? Because if he were to be develop, he has all the tools. I just a name to throw out there. It's interesting. But uh, either way, Skyler Thompson got some complimentary notes about him from Coach McDaniel, which is always nice to see. All right, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Like I said, video coming out later today with my final Dolphins 53-man roster prediction, so stay on the lookout for that. Also, have your notifications turned on, so when we drop that video, you'll get alerted. But also, make sure you subscribe for tomorrow's video, breaking down the entire Dolphins 53-man roster. We might be going live as well tomorrow to break down the roster, answer some questions, and looking at some players that could be available post the roster cut down days. So hit that sub button and I'll see you with a bunch of content over the next 48 hours. Dolphins.